react to. Paralympic sports are not as high performing and competitive. Oh, I'm offended. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can the author of this question please step forward? Hi, I'm Aini. I'm Team Singapore Para Power Lifter and I've been doing power lifting for four years. So I was approached by Kalai Vinan, a fellow Team Singapore Power Lifter. So he asked if I'm interested to join the team uh, training for Para Power Lifting and then I give it a try and then yeah, so I'm pretty stuck to it. Hello, I am Sophie Soon. I am a Team Singapore Para Swimmer and I've been in the national team for six years. I started my first Learn to Swim class when I was eight and at age 18 when the ASEAN Para Games came to Singapore, I joined the national team for the first time and that's how I got into the national team and pretty much been here since then. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, it hasn't even started yet. No, <laughs> I'm stressed. <laughs> so are you guys ready to answer some questions, some tough questions? I guess I am. Yes, well, we're sitting hopefully. here now, right? We kind of have no choice. Yeah. <laughs> Can we leave her ready now? <laughs> <laughs> to play Spill It, players will take turns answering a question. Players will also be given three action cards each, where they can use at any point of time. For skip, you can skip the question. For swap, you can swap the cards with your opponent. For switch, get your opponent to answer instead. Sophie, ready? Oh my heart, it's pounding, jeng, but jeng, okay. Jeng. <laughs> True or false, I have no social life because I train for an excruciating amount of hours. Ooh, when we were ramping up for Tokyo Paralympics, I had no social life because I pretty much had, I think, two or three trainings each day and my rest days is just sleeping at home. I didn't get to go out because I was so exhausted all day. Because I have to maintain a certain body weight, so because of that, sometimes, you know, I have to turn down the offers from my friend or sometimes if they want to meet, insist on meeting, then they will have to come over to my place. I mean, I eat my food, they eat their own food. Yeah, yeah. Your Without friends food. are nice. Yeah, oh, my friends thankfully. will just all eat junk food in front of me. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel sad. <laughs> they are so testing sad. you like your resilience. Yeah, and they have the <laughs> audacity to tell me, Sophie, you're, you're, you're re very resilient, huh? you're very strong. <laughs> I'm like, you're testing me, is <laughs> it? <laughs> Alright, Aini, mm -hmm. what is something about the Paralympic Games that most people wouldn't know? So, so at the Paralympic Games, like I was in the same apartment with Sophie and Pinsu. So our training also clashes. Sometimes they train like super early, like 5am. They already out for training and I will train at noon. So by the time they are back, I'm out for training. Then by the time, sometimes I'm back for dinner, from dinner, then they are already asleep. Yeah, so when we have like small pockets of time, we are just, you know, lying down at the uh, living area and then you know just talking about other things besides sports lah. Just um, very casual things. Yeah. And then me being the weird person, I ask a lot of weird questions. <laughs> yes. Are you ready? Okay, okay. Sounds it's quite interesting. Though. No, it's quite interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah. True or false, I'm bothered by my physical disability. Ah, okay. Good question. Interesting, right? Yeah. Okay. I think when growing up, I was bothered uh, because I think um, I look different like especially in secondary school because my friends were way taller than me and I was just stagnating at that height uh, but then when I um, started doing para sports where I get to connect with other para athletes that's when I realized that I can actually openly discuss about my condition share about my condition without feeling that they are sympathizing me mm. growing up I do have I'm bothered with my condition but when I eventually joined the para sports, I think I feel like my disability made me see my true ability. Wow. Yeah. So profound. Sophie, what was your worst injury? Ooh, oh, I have one. Oh my gosh, I just remembered. Uh, but this is a very stupid injury. <laughs> so what happened was I was at the pool so we were training in an outdoor pool by the way. So I swim at the corner lane. So that means like the wall goes in the corner like that. Uh -uh. What happened was they were doing diving and it wasn't my turn to dive. One boy was on the blocks and about to dive in. And it was almost my turn and suddenly my friend from behind me shouted, Sophie, that's a horror new uh -huh. I'm like, oh my goodness. So I got so scared, I jumped into the pool. But but my right leg went in straight, my left leg went in bent. Because it was bent, the shin bone here that was so close and he smacked right onto the, oh, the no. edge of the pool. Oh, no. So it was like, it started getting blue-black and stuff and then my coach 
we had to rub salt into the wound and came up to me, Sophie, you're not a three-year-old girl. You shouldn't be crying over a bee. And I'm like, it's a horror! <laughs> but it was so scary. But yeah, I got myself injured. I had to go to the A&E to check it out. And they're like, okay, it's nothing, fr no fracture, but it's a bone bruising. They're like, oh, you can't swim for the next two weeks. Oh, and I was like, man. oh, and then I went swimming the next day. <laughs> Okay, Aini, if you're not doing your sport, what is another sport that you would pursue? Dun dun. Wow. Dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think I would want to try wheelchair tennis. Yeah. Oh! I think it's quite cool. Like, tennis itself, like the able bodied tennis, I think there's a lot of adrenaline watching it. Mm -hmm. But wheelchair tennis is a different ball game totally. I have in a way quite a lot of natural flexibility. Wow. So I've been thinking about doing gymnastics but after I see the way they do gymnastics training I get a bit scared. <laughs> what kind of support do you get as a para athlete? Thankfully the Singapore Sports Institute is very equal in terms of opportunity so we pretty much get everything that an able bodied athlete would get. Also we get access to dietitians, nutritionists, um, who else? Yes. Physiologists. Oh, psychologists as well. Psychologists, yes. yes. So in a way, sometimes like you're very stressed about sports and you just need to vent it out. They are able to help you. Especially when we go for competitions like Paralympics and mm. other competitions, it can get very stressful. But they also give us like coping strategies, I guess, on how to um, you know, deal with the stress that we are currently facing during competition. Previously, when I first started the sport, I was training at a CrossFit gym. It's really at a secluded place, so uh, public don't get to see us train. And then as years goes by, I moved to the public gym at Topayo Active SG. So I think that movement, you know, see that they are slowly integrating us to the social setting. Yeah, so public actually can see how we train. So I think that has over time improved and I think with that like I mean we can also see the upcoming more of having inclusive gym. So currently we have I think five and I think we are expanding more on that as well. What is your best memory of your experience at the Paralympics? Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get that? <laughs> Okay, I think this Paralympic Games because only 10 athletes were there. Like we were we were a very uh, small contingent. So most of us are very, very um, close to one another. On my day of competition, on the way back, they were messaging me like, where are you, where are you? Tell us when you are at the dining hall. And then, uh, so when I reached the dining hall, they came to, you know, like have a celebratory meal with me. And I think that was very touching because usually that's the time where they are already in bed. When I met them at the dining hall, then we just started hugging. And then I remembered Pinsu was asking me, are you happy? Are you happy? And then I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm very happy. Like, I'm happy to see them and I'm happy that my competition is over. That is one of the best memories because, you know, like, regardless of your performance at the games, your friend will always be there. React to. Paralympic sports are not as high performing and competitive. Oh, I'm offended! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I can't tell, I'm quaking. Is this where we quit? Yeah. <laughs> I think we are quitting now. Excuse uh -huh. me? Yeah. Can the author of this question please step forward? Yeah, this is so unfair. What do you mean not as competitive? Yeah. Excuse me? If not as competitive, then our whole contingent will have gotten a medal already, okay? Yeah. But only one got a medal. Yes. Yeah, we won't be wearing this t-shirt. We'll be exactly. wearing our medals already. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I have a word in mind, but I don't think I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they need to be put in our shoes to really understand. I mean, I'm not one to be very pegro and like, you think my life, uh, so much, my time life is so much higher than yours or whatever. I think everyone has their own struggles. And um, I'm not saying that whoever, whoever thinks this way, their life is easier than ours. But I think they need to respect that whatever we do, it doesn't come easy. That's all I'm going to say about it because anything else is not going to be good. <laughs> True or false? Like all athletes, Paralympians have an expiry date. I think everything has expiry date. Lah. I mean, food that has longer expiry dates because they are preservatives and we are all all natural. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> It's like when you stop and then you feel like you want to go back to training but when you are training, you're like, I want to stop. stop. Yeah. yeah. This one's actually quite hard. Are you? <laughs> are you ready? Okay. How do you think Singapore has grown or changed in terms of inclusiveness? Which one uh, should I use? No, 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 don't you dare, don't you dare. <laughs> Switch. Switch ah? Yes. Seriously. So open so answers. I swear ah, I, I'm going to play horrible songs in your car later. <laughs> 
education has played a big part because it's something that we are incorporating a lot more into schools and I think we're having a lot more um, outreach programs to teach educators on how to teach the new generation and this is something that um, hasn't been do done a lot when Aini and I were back in school mm. in a way it was a bit of a taboo topic it wasn't something that was not spoken about a lot but now we are becoming a lot more open which is good because I think the key to growth is communication. What is your hope for Singapore when it comes to supporting Paralympians and persons with disabilities? That mentality in like you don't have to sympathise persons with disability but mm -hmm. instead you know encourage them to do what interests them. For example, sports, art. So that kind of shift in mindset will definitely grow the pool of para-athletes and also the support because now the the pool is pretty small but if we grow it bigger then you know the support will come in because people will know more about para athletes yeah mm -hmm. so i think mindset is definitely one of them what have you learned from the paralympic games oh my gosh i learned so much mm -hmm. like to always expect the unexpected. I don't think we ever really fully get it, mm -mm. but I think this is this competition hit me the hardest mm -hmm. because everything that I thought would happen did not happen. <laughs> I really, I think for a moment during the race, like a split second, I really thought I was gonna lose because I was like, this is not happening the way it should. <laughs> and I was just freaking out, but in the same time, I was like telling myself, no, okay, no, 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 you can do this, you can do this, go, go, go. And somehow managing to get fourth, I was like, whoa, okay. And the finishing coming now from uh, soon of Singapore. That was something that, you know, to me, even getting to swim a final was so amazing. Ask anything you want. Wow, so I can really ask you anything. You can ask me anything? Yeah. Okay. What's your favourite quote? Ooh, mm. I know this one. It's never afraid to be afraid. I think learning ah. is something that I learned when I was really young. When we feel fear, mm -hmm. we take that as an indicator to be like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this because I feel scared. When in actual fact, we should continue to push on like oh even though I feel fear or I feel worried doesn't mm. mean that it's I should stop and I shouldn't be doing it. My favorite quote is it is heavy now but soon it will be your warm-up. When I first started powerlifting I told myself okay 60 kilo is the max that I will go. I will never lift heavier than 60 kilo. Yeah but now I'm doing 81 kilo 60 kilo is my warm-up set. Yeah so I find that you know everything in life when you first started is very very hard but once you get used to it you know you kind of get the rhythm of things it becomes like you know hey you know I've done this before it was hard previously but now I know how to overcome it. I think we had a lot of fun, we had a lot of laughter mm. and disturbing yeah. one another like we yeah. used to in Tokyo. Yeah, doesn't feel any different. Feels yeah. like Tokyo. Yeah, it's just that we are not lying on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Spill It. Remember to like this video, subscribe to You Got Watch and comment down below. You can answer all the questions that we were asked today. And share, and share, remember to share also. Alright, see you. you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.